Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll do a complete walkthrough of the software provided with the O-Ray UHD-204VW video wall processor. This software gives you complete control over how this product operates, including the ability to change the EDID settings internally to match your media stream, adjusting the input and output resolutions to match the monitors you're using and the media content you're distributing, and also adjusting the way the media content is displayed on your large video wall can all be done from inside the unit using the software. Now, the first step is to download the software package and install it on your computer. And then once you've installed that package, you'll need to connect your computer up to the video wall processor using one of three methods. If you have a newer computer that has a LAN connection on it, you can use a short LAN cable between your computer and plug it directly into the back of the video wall processor. If you have an older computer that has a nine pin connector on it, you can use the included cable, plug one end into your computer, the other end into the back and the three pin connector there. The third method is if you don't have a 9-pin connector and don't have a LAN connection, you can actually use a USB-A port on your computer with the included cable and adapter, and you'll plug it into any available USB-A port on your computer, plug the other end into the back of the video wall processor to make that connection. The next step in the process is to actually change the IP address on your computer to match the input IP address on the video wall processor, and I'll show you how to do that next. It's a very simple procedure, and what that does is essentially put your laptop on the same network as the video wall processor so the two can communicate between each other. So stay tuned, and I'll show you how to change that IP address, and then I'll do a walkthrough of all the screens available in the software so you completely understand how to manage your new video wall processor. To use the embedded software to configure your matrix, you'll first have to make a connection to the product. You have a few choices here, which include a direct cable to your computer through the RS-232 interface, using the cables included with the kit, or a network connection using a standard LAN cable. The LAN connection is the easiest and available on most computers. Once you make this physical connection, you'll still need to make an adjustment to the computer to ensure it's on the same private network as the switch. In this section, I'm assuming you're using a Windows-based computer, but the steps are similar for a Mac. This is an easy process to follow, and you'll start by opening the Network Connections page on your Start menu. From there, locate your active network connection. In my case, it's labeled Ethernet 2. Just double-click it to access the Status page. From here, click the Properties tab to access the settings for that interface. Locate and double-click the item labeled IPv4 to access the settings for this protocol. This is the page where you'll make your changes and you need to ensure that you click the use the following IP address and change the values to 192.168.0.120 for the IP address and 255.255.255.0 for the default gateway. Now click OK to exit these screens and you're ready to control the switch. To make any changes to the configuration of the video wall processor, you'll first need to make a connection between the device and your computer. And to do that, you can simply use the software that was included with the product. When you start that program, the software will scan your network to find the device and make that connection over the network. And it'll list the IP address of the video wall processor in the window on the bottom of the screen. It should automatically start reading all of the input resolutions and frame rates as well as your monitor resolutions. If it doesn't do that, you can simply highlight the IP address and click the status button to instigate that pairing. Once that's complete, you'll now be on the main switch page of the interface with the various sections you can adjust for your setup. You'll want to wait a few seconds for the video wall processor to read all of the details of the connected devices before making any changes. You should also verify that the status shows that you're connected. From this screen, you can check current status of the switch and adjust which of the two HDMI inputs are sent to the monitors connected to the four HDMI outputs. You can also do this with a single click by using the All Set button. You also have the option of adjusting the EDID settings as needed for your various connected devices. Next tab. The next tab is the Signal Settings section that allows you to view and change the input and output video resolutions and frame rates. The first step is to tap the Read All button to allow the matrix to determine the specifications for the media devices you have connected. Once this completes, you can compare the input devices to the output devices you have connected and make any needed adjustments to the output type and the output format by using the drop-down menus. You can also control what is displayed on the screen when no input device is connected by adjusting the No Signals Mode settings. This can be helpful when setting up the video wall processor by letting you know that your monitors are connected and working. 
You even have the option of using a test pattern on the screen to indicate that the processor is waiting for an input device. The next tab is the picture quality and position control for the video wall processor and allows you to make individual adjustments for each of your output monitors. You have individual control over settings like brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness to adjust these four monitors as needed. You simply select the monitor you'd like to adjust, tap the read tab to view the current settings, and change whatever you like to get the perfect picture. If you're not happy with the results, simply tap the reset tab to start over. The next tab is the main video adjustment section, and this is where you decide how to display your content on the four monitors. To start, click on one of the monitors in the video wall section and drag your mouse to the others you'd like to include in that group. You can select all four monitors or even two at a time to create different video presentations. When you're happy with the layout, you can save it to use later by tapping the Save Layout button. This allows you to quickly recall the same settings and layout for use in the future. This page also allows you to adjust the bezel settings for various monitor setups and to account for thicker bezels and make the overall video wall look as unified as possible. I hope you found this overview of the software provided with the O-Ray UHD-204VW Video Wall Processor helpful. It really does provide total control over how the product operates, and with a few simple mouse clicks, you can make whatever adjustments are needed to perfectly match your setup. For example, you can adjust the EDID settings to synchronize with your media content. You can also fine tune both the output and input resolutions to accommodate a wide range of both monitors and media devices. And you also have a lot of control over how best to display that media content on your large video wall. And the best part is you can save those settings for use later and recall them with a simple click of a mouse. The GUI is incredibly intuitive and you have complete control over how the product operates no matter what environment you're installing it in. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, thanks for watching.